Now that's a coho. Hey, my name is Mark Romanek. We're with Sam at Catcher Lodge this week, way up on the Kenai River in Alaska. Stick around, see if we can catch some big silvers like this one. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Northwest Ontario Tourism Association, there's no place like this. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Evan Rood Outboards, introducing the all new Evan Rood E Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. Maxima Fishing Lines, the right line every time. Also, these fine sponsors. Jake, you might have the distinction of being the first person to ever catch a silver on a on a planer board in Alaska. <laughs> now that's a beautiful fish. Look at that, dude. Oh, look at that coho. It's early morning on the Kenai River in Alaska. Stick around, we'll show you. Hopefully a couple more of these gorgeous fish. We've only been on the water for a few minutes and we've already got our first silver in the boat. And no surprises how that fish was caught. It was caught on a plug. And here on the Kenai, that's a very popular presentation. But we did something a little bit different. Brought a little bit of uh, Michigan flavor, so to speak, and added a planer board to the line. This little OR34 mini board, just to get it out to the side a little bit further. First fish comes on the planer board. Kind of a cool thing. Who knows what'll happen, but we know we're gonna catch them on plugs and maybe we're gonna catch a few on boards as well. here for the time being. Mr. Romanek, you want this one? No, no, no. Get out my feet here. I'd say it's probably about the same size fish. Now we're here with Salmon Catcher Lodge and when you come up here for a fishing adventure you're going to be experiencing a variety of different kinds of fishing and you're going to be experiencing a variety of different guides. Salmon Catcher sets their people up every day with a different with a different outfitter and our outfitter today is Ian. Yes sir. Yeah, I appreciate it. Sounds like you're the guy that knows about how to catch silvers. I try. I try. Well, it's a, every day is a little different. Well I tell you what you've been doing great for us so far. We appreciate it. So we're going to catch some silvers and we're also obviously going to catch some pinks. We're going to be wading through quite a few pinks to get our silvers, yes sir. And pretty much today is going to be a plug deal, right? Plugs and we'll probably do a little bit of bouncing eggs All right. at some point, maybe All. cast a couple spinners. All cool stuff. All right. Well, great. Well, we're off to a good start. Yes, sir. 
Stay on it, Mrs. Romanak. Definitely a silver. Definitely a better fighting fish. This is really exciting action, you guys. It, I just, I can't, I can't tell you enough how much fun this is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Keep tight on it, Mrs. Romanak. We're moving now with him. Much easier to reel them in when we're moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go. Yes! Woo! Good job, Mary. Wow. Very good silver. This is awesome. Ian, there's a lot of water here. I'm curious what you're looking for when you're trying to set up for a spot to plug uh, fish for uh, silvers. Well, when we're silver fishing on the rivers, uh, silvers are basically, we look at them as lazy fish. They take the path of least resistance. Usually we're fishing them pretty close to the shore. We're looking for gravel bars, anything that bottlenecks the fish. Those fish that are coming up out of that pool as they're moving up river, they're having to come right up over the bar to come right through us. Uh, you can silver fish pretty much anywhere right along the bank, but usually, usually these bottlenecks, these choke points, you're gonna increase your odds of uh, catching silvers if you can kind of locate these key spots where these fish are moving through. Uh, also, a couple really good spots to fish are right along current seams and eddies where, uh, where fish are congregating, where they're kind of hanging out before they move. Uh, early in the morning, we'll bounce eggs in, uh, in some of the dead pools right along the edge of the current seam where those fish are laid up uh, getting ready to move. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV, Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. Additional considerations provided by Ontario's Algoma Country, that real. There's lots of ways that you can catch these fish here in Alaska, but one of the most popular ways is what they call plugging. And there's a variety of different plugs that work very well. Today we're using two different kinds, one called a quick fish, another one called a maglip, and both of them were doing very well for us. Well, we wrap these plugs mainly because fish key off a of scent, like the salmon, they're mainly keying off a of scent. They are visual biters, but scent definitely does help. So we take sardine, uh, whole sardines, and we fillet them out. And we make, uh, basically make, make a little pair of pants that slides right off of the center belly hook. And you use this, I use an elastic thread wrap. It's real stretchy. Some people use sewing thread. Some people use some, some different brands. But you'll peg it with your, with your thumb, and then you start wrapping. Then you'll cross over your wrap to, to, to lock it down. Then you set the, set the hook over, then wrap the front. I probably go a little overkill on my wrap so I don't have to re-wrap after every fish. And then right here, to lock in the wrap, you're gonna use a half hitch. I just hold my thumb out here like this. I come around my thumb and take the spool and go under it. Pull it, under it, pull it. I do that two to three times and then break it off. And then you have a wrapped quick fish or a maglip and it's ready to fish. Things just got pretty crazy. Go. Got it. All right. These fish are absolutely insane. This is something you gotta put on your bucket list. If you've never fished the Kenai, you really owe it to yourself to do this. It's right here, Jakers. All right, nice job, son. That is a big silver. By Lake Michigan standards where we're at, that'd be a trophy of a lifetime right there. What a sweet fish. What a sweet fish. Right there's the reason you come all the way to Alaska and fish the Kenai. That is a beautiful coho, or what they call around here silver salmon. Man, 
<laughs> what a rush. You gotta come up here and get you some of these. Now, one of the things you have to understand if you come to Alaskan fish is you're probably gonna need a guide. And the reason you're gonna need a guide is the Kenai River is one of the most regulated fisheries in the world. You can't simply understand all the regulations. If you're not local here and you don't understand all the different regulations, you're probably gonna get yourself on the wrong side of the law. So having a guide is one of those things, not only is he gonna put you on fish, he's gonna make sure that you're fishing by the rules. It's a thing. You know, when people come all the way to Alaska, they're coming here to catch the stellar species, the, you know, the things like silver salmon and king salmon, no question about it. But there's lots of other species here you can catch. Today, we were entertained with pink salmon. We caught dozens and dozens of them. And in between the silvers, the pinks keep you very much occupied and very much smiling. Well, there's actually two different ways to do this style of fishing. You can fish with a line counter reel, or you can just use a regular bait caster style reel like this. The way you know how deep you're fishing is at home, what you'll do is you'll count how many feet of line per pass. Now what I mean by pass is you have your level line here and each pass is a certain amount of feet. So in your backyard at home, you can go out and you can measure how many feet of line that actually is. That way you could duplicate with what a line counter does. In this case, we have it about 10 feet of pass. So each pass is 10 feet of line. This is a riot. I've done an awful lot of trout and salmon fishing in my life, but I'll tell you, nothing quite like this. This is incredible. Alaska's really living up to its reputation. This looks like maybe this is gonna be a pink, but it is still pulling. Jake, you gonna give me an assist on that one? Thank you, young man. That one's on the maglip. Very good. Thank you, Jake. I don't think there's anybody home on this one. Got a little slow on the drum. Oh, oh, he's still he's there. there. He's, he's there. still there. Let me come back and give you a little help. All right. Oh, yeah, he's not very happy right now. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, there we go. My goodness, they are pretty, aren't they? They are a handful. Well, definitely a mixed bag. More pinks than silvers, but still um, plenty of silver action. All a guy could hope for. Let's see if we can get this guy unhooked and back in the water. They are delicate. Can't keep them out of the water very well. Additional considerations provided by Lawrence Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Fishing 411 is also brought to you by Okuma, high performance, and Mustang Survival. We save lives for a living. <laughs> the reason I'm giggling is we're trying to do an interview. We can't get an interview done here because every time we sit down to do it, we get a fish on. This has just been steady, steady action here. Absolute steady action. The pinks will keep you busy and the silvers will make your heart race. <laughs> Got myself another pinky. Towards me, with their jig, that a boy. Woo! It's all yours, Jake. There's one more rod that's still out. There. I'm on it. That's a gorgeous fish right there. That's on an OR34 side planer. If we put one out to the side, and all that's really doing is just kind of spreading out our spread a little bit more. I guess you say it that way. Um, we're just getting it a little bit further out to the side, getting it away from the boat a little bit. Man, that is a gorgeous coho. 
Hey, if you want to get involved in fishing plugs for trout and salmon, you're going to need some basic equipment. What I recommend is an eight and a half to a 10 foot trigger stick, like I have, one I have in my hand, this happens to be Okuma. You're going to need a level line reel, and this one happens to be a convector right here, and you're going to load it with monofilament. I recommend 20 to 25 pound test. What we're doing down here at the terminal end, though, we have a swivel here, and this very last little bit of the leader down to the plug, that's 40 pound test. And the reason for it is we can grab a hold of that leader, and that helps us be able to control that fish when we get it to the boat for unhooking it. So and it also helps you prevent you losing your valuable plugs. You're not going to accidentally break off a plug on a fish at the boat. So that basic setup right there is what's going to get it done for you, plugging. So let's kind of explain a little bit how we're fishing today. There's a lot of current ripping through the Kenai River here. And I guess it's all the way up eight to 10 miles an hour, so this current's really ripping. We got an anchor set with the nose of the boat into the current. That's keeping us in one position, and we're staying right here in this one position. Then we're using the current to actually put the action onto our plugs. We have a good setup. We have four different rods out with four different plugs, and the current is actually putting the action onto the crankbaits. And these fire drills, what we've got going on here, these silvers, once they get hooked up, they go wherever they want to go, and they just they just tear. And uh, so we've got to clear some lines, and, uh, and in some cases, we actually have to pull our anchor and drift downstream. Yeah, what another beautiful fish. Come pop up. There we go. Nice job. All right. I love this. This is a riot. Absolutely a riot. Bucket list stuff, man. Now, what they tell me, this is about an average size coho. You're back home in Michigan, that would be a very good coho for us. Uh, but they get much bigger here. They get up in the 10s, the 12s, 15. They even tell us rumors of 20 pounders. Now, we certainly haven't seen one of those today. But anybody who wouldn't be happy catching that fish, I'm telling you what, that is an awesome silver coho salmon. Additional considerations provided by Stryker Brands. Give Mother Nature the cold shoulder. And Bait Rigs Tackle, America's innovator of fine fishing products. Fishing 411 is also brought to you by Fishhawk Electronics. Featuring Fishhawk's Catch Fish Guarantee. How would I end up with the silver? All right. There we go. That's what they're talking about. Look at that. <laughs> and all the confusion, I thought I was on the pink track. Look at him go. He's getting wrapped up pretty good there. Swing him out here for you, Jakers. Nice job, son. Nice job. Oh, baby. And we're having one of those days on the river you just dream about. Anybody that didn't think that that was the most beautiful fish on earth, man, I tell you what, these cohos are awesome, jumping, running, twisting, tackle busting machines. You gotta love it. Pretty intense when a silver jumps on out of the water and you're watching your rod and you're hoping you're going to be able to bring it in. All right, we're coming around the other side. Now, I don't know about you, but this is why I come to Alaska. Actually, I'd catch anything, I'm happy. <laughs> but this is pretty cool. This fish just bit and is just stripped out line like nobody's business. Just trying to gain a little ground on this guy is, a, is gonna be a challenge here. Here we go. Now we're starting to get a little bit of the upper hand here. Ooh, let me get my ear. Yeah. Come on, puppy. Oh, which way did he go? He just went right. Is he on the other side? He's right, right, at, the, right, right at the rope. He's yeah, under it now. Under it. Hold on. Watch him with the Come back here. Come back here. Get your rock tip in the water. Come on. No, you're okay. I'm going to go down a little bit. No, I think you're good. Looks like you got your hands full. Now that was amazing. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. I'll tell you what, if we can get this thing in the boat, it will be a gift. 
because he should be free right now after all that. Oh, baby. There we go. Now we're seeing some headway. Oh, didn't like that. Man. This one just don't, this one don't want to give up. This one, this one doesn't want to end up on. He's making me have to do some technical boat work here. That was pretty impressive. I will say that uh, that was pretty darn cool. One more time with the... Oh, almost had you there, Jake. Sorry, buddy. I was just about to lift him when you, when you went for him. As soon as I get to that bead, we got him. Okay, Jake, here we go. There you go. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> you know, we're drifting down a river when you, when you get these fish hooked up, you know, you can't fight them against the current. So we drop the buoy and we're just floating downstream. Well, unfortunately, this fish decided to go under the boat next to us as anchor line. So got a little bit uh, dicey there for a little while, but we ended up with him. That is so cool. I didn't think that that one was gonna go in the box, but he did. Wow. Now that is probably one of the best cohos that I'll catch this year. In fact, I guarantee it's gonna be the best coho I catch this year. That is the reason why you come to Alaska, Kenai River. You're not gonna get them like this anywhere else. Yeah, this fish has got sea lice on him. What that means is he's fresh up out of the ocean. They tell me that the sea lice only live on these fish once they hit fresh water for one to two days tops. So we know that this one is fresh up and that's probably why he had so much fire. Absolutely on fire. Yeah, I'm Mark Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 411. I'd like to thank Ian, our guide, for putting this on world-class silver fishing. I'd also like to thank our host, Sam and Catcher Lodge. Hey, if you get a chance to come to Alaska and catch some kings, you know where you gotta go. Closed captioning is provided by Orca Coolers, built for everyday use and total abuse. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leader in trolling technology. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Northwest Ontario Tourism Association, there's no place like this. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Evan Rood Outboards, introducing the all new Evan Rood e -Tech G2, the outboard of the future, available today. Maxima Fishing Lines, the right line every time. Oh, he's off. Yeah. Ah. Is he off? My right hand, this is a new kid on the block. Oh, got another fish on. We're getting interrupted for another silver. <laughs> you got